This is Timothy Jenkins from Chattanooga, Tennessee, and you're listening to my father on Heaven Bound. I see a sea. Good morning again, friends, and welcome one more time to Heaven Bound. On behalf of the great folks here at Calvary Bible Church, I'm Doug Benedict, and today I have the unique pleasure of broadcasting from the third seat of the sound booth. And did I get fired? Maybe. (laughs) No, we, unfortunately, my family and I have been called away to another church, so i it with a heavy heart i do say this is one of my final weeks here at calvary bible church but god has blessed us with miss ryan fitzgerald who is going to fill in for us so she is sitting at the controls running the show making sure it runs great so we look forward to hearing from her more in the future and how well the church continues to do but enough about me This program is brought to you by the great folks here at Calvary Bible Church. And if you don't currently attend a good Bible-believing church, why don't you come join us today? Even if you're in the area for vacation, here visiting, whatever it is, we would love to have you. And Calvary Bible Church is a small congregation in Gregg, New York. We are an independent Bible-believing church. We believe everything from the beginning of the Bible to the end, and even in some of the credits. So come on out and join us with this being the second Sunday of the month. We're going to begin our services this morning at 930 for Sunday school. Then at 1030, we'll have the morning service, and we'll be out of here by noon. Now tonight at 6 o'clock, we'll be back for our evening service. And also Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we will have our midweek prayer and Bible study session. Come on out for all those services. Come on out for just one of them. Whatever it is, we'd love to have you. And if worst case scenario, you can't join us, we do stream all of our services live at cbclewiscounty.com as well as on livestream.com, Facebook Live, and YouTube Live. So if you want to come join us, you can put in your GPS 6968, Sweeney Road, Gregg, New York. That will get you pretty close to here, but you might have to pay attention once you turn on Sweeney Road. You can also follow these super easy, old-fashioned directions. If you're coming out of Boonville, head north on Route 12 and make a right-hand turn on a Burdick's Crossing Road. If you're coming out of Lowville, head south on Route 12 and make a left-hand turn on a Burdick's Crossing Road. If you're coming out of West Leiden, head north on 26, keep straight on a 12D, head north on Route 12, and make a right-hand turn on a Burdick's Crossing Road. At Burdick's Crossing Road, all the directions do come together, so take Burdick's Crossing Road all the way to the end. Make a left-hand turn on to Gregg Road, head up the hill, and make your first right-hand turn on to Sweeney Road. And we are up there about 200 yards on the right-hand side. Now, if you want to come and you don't have a ride, give us a call this morning at 315-348-6271, or send an email to cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. That's CBC as in Calvary Bible Church. cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. And we will find someone right near you to come pick you up and give you a ride. But don't use all of our live stream services as an excuse not to come. Because you miss out on so much. Including the topic that we're going to cover this morning. There have been several battles in history. And there's one coming that's going to put all of them to shame. Turn in your Bibles to the book of Revelation. The pastor's going to jump around a bit so it might be hard to follow. But as you're getting ready to attempt to follow along, let's listen to Gold City as they sing The Midnight Cry. I hear the sound of a mighty rushing wind 
And it's closer now Than it's ever been I can almost hear the trumpet Prophecies fulfilling and signs of the times, they're appearing everywhere. I can almost hear the fire. And that was Gold City. That has got to be one of my favorite all-time songs. Midnight Cry, when Jesus comes again. And dear friend, he is coming again. He could come today. Now, he, he may not, and nobody really knows when he will come. But as I've said countless times on the program, he said in John chapter 14, verse 3, If I go, I will come again. The angel said, you men of Galilee, why stand you gazing into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall so come again in like manner as you have seen him go. Jesus is going to come again. And we don't know when. 
We There are lots of songs in our hymn books on Golden Daybreak. Jesus will come. When Jesus comes. Just all kinds of it will be worth it all when we see Christ. So Jesus is coming again. Now, there are some things that are going to happen. The book of Revelation is really interesting. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, I can't understand the book of Revelation. There's so much in there. And it it is, there is a lot of symbolic. There are a lot of verses that said, and I saw as it were, or another verse would say like unto. And there are similes in the book of Revelation. There are pictures in the book of Revelation, but I believe the book is, you can't understand it. I, I'll be the first to admit to you, there are things in it I do not understand. But I think I have a fairly good grasp of it in that in chapter 1, it says, Write the things which thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. So there's really three clear divisions of the book. The things which are, chapter 1, the things which thou hast seen in chapter 1, the things which are, are really chapters 2 and 3, and chapter 4 and verse 1. It says, Come up hither, and I shall show thee things which shall be hereafter. Again, being reminded, write the things thou hast seen, the things which are, and the things which shall be hereafter. That there is a clear line drawn between the things which are and the things which shall be hereafter. Chapter 4 begins the things which shall be hereafter. And immediately the scene is transport. We are transported to heaven in chapter 4 and 5. And then we are transported back to the earth, beginning in chapter 6. And I think that the book of Revelation is fairly chronological, that there are, there are some parenthetical chapters but by and large, in the book of Revelation, there are 62 sevens. There are the seven churches, the seven spirits. There are the seven seals, the seven trumpets, the seven vials, the seven thunders. And there are 62 sevens, the seven personages that are found in the book of Revelation. One chapter in particular is quite, they're, they're, let me say this, they're all quite alarming. But in chapter 16, we read this, and the sixth angel poured out his vial. Now the seals, the seven seals beginning in chapter 6, we find there the, they, they happen, but not rapidly. The seven vials or bowls and the seven trumpets appear to happen, appear to happen one right after the other. So we read then in chapter 16 and verse 12, and the sixth angel sounded, or poured, I'm sorry, we're, at, we're on the bowls, and his vial upon the great river Euphrates, and the water of the, was there dried up, that the way of the kings of the east might be prepared. We have a lot of problems with China. And I will tell you, folks, that China means us no good. They are... They are plotting. They're, they're always doing things. And whether you think they purposely released this virus or whether you think it was an accident, it is the China virus. There's, there's no doubt about it. I know the Speaker of the House wants to call it the Trump virus. He didn't have anything to do with it. But anyway, I digress. And I saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon and out of the mouth of the beast and out of the mouth of the prophet, the false prophet, and they are the spirits of devils working miracles, which go forth unto the kings of the earth and the whole world to gather them to the battle of the great day of God Almighty. Behold, I come as a thief. Blessed is he that watcheth and keepeth his garments lest he walk naked, and they see his shame. And he gathered them together and to a place called in the Hebrew tongue, Armageddon. When we think of the word Armageddon, it's used, you know, 
and people traditionally think it, well, it's the end of the world. There have been movies made, you know, uh, I can't remember that one. Uh, the meteor was going to hit the earth and they went up and they blew it up and that was called Armageddon. And and you hear it referred to in literature, you hear people speak about it from time to time. But what is Armageddon? Armageddon literally means the Valley of Megiddo. Megiddo was a mountain in Israel. And the Valley of Jezreel runs about 200 miles along through Israel to the Valley to Armageddon or to the Valley of Megiddo. Just what is it? Well, according to what the Bible says, it is going to be the final, well, let me put it like this, the next to the final great battle in world history. There is another battle that really has nothing to do with this one, but there will be one more battle in Revelation chapter 20. But, but here we find all the kings of the earth gathered together to make war. Zechariah chapter 14 tells us that all the nations will be gathered together. When you read Daniel chapter 11, you get kind of an idea of what's going to happen, that all the, the kings of the earth, the kings of the east, the kings of the north, the kings of the south, they're all going to meet there. And it says in Zechariah 14 to take a spoil, they're going to try and plunder Israel. But at that time, at that point in verse 4, the Bible makes it clear that God himself, which we now understand to be the Lord Jesus Christ, shall return to the Mount of Olives. The angels said that he will come again in like manner as you've seen him go. How did they see him go? They saw him go up from the Mount of Olives. And in Zechariah 14, it says that he shall return to the Mount of Olives, and he will fight for Israel, as he did in the days of Joshua. Now, all the nations of the world will be there. Now, here is something that I find to be, this is what is truly amazing. They're all going to meet there, and I think as, as you read it, you read Daniel chapter 11, you come to the conclusion that the Antichrist will be there, and uh, the, the, his confederation, and the kings of the east, which we would understand to be China and maybe Korea, but it's a 200 million man army. It's going to be quite an army. The Euphrates River will be dried up so that the kings of the east have a way to come. Then the kings of the south, which I perceive to be those associated with Egypt, and they're all going to gather there at the Battle of Armageddon. And it's going to be quite a battle because the Bible says the blood will flow for 200 miles to the horse's bridle. Now, as we understand it, this battle of Armageddon is going to be like the final battle. I, I understand there'll be a series of battles, but the battle of Armageddon is when they gather in the valley of Jezreel, where they will meet. The Antichrist is going to is going to try to exert his final a power, but something miraculous happens. At just, really, at the point where it seems like men are going to finally destroy the world, they turn their, their hatred, which we see now. You know, the thing is, we'll never let it happen again, that the Holocaust that happened to the Jews, but anti-Semitism is rampant in Europe. And we find it true here in America. But there will be a time when it looks like all these nations are gathered together in the Valley of Armageddon. So, and people say, well, I don't know how that could be possible, preacher. Well, it's a 200-mile valley. And not only that, but you stop and think about our connection with the United Nations. Now, I'm not saying, really, I'm not. I'm only throwing that out for you to think about. But all these nations will be gathered, and then they're going to turn on Israel, destroy Israel. They're finally going to destroy the Jewish nation. And that is when Jesus returns in Revelation chapter 19. We read that he rides upon a white horse. And he has a name written on his vesture, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. 
and the armies of the world are going to turn upon the Lord Jesus Christ to try and destroy him. But the Bible says there's a sharp two-edged sword that goes out of his mouth, and the false prophet, the beast, will be taken, and they will throw, be thrown into the lake of fire. The devil will be thrown into the bottomless pit, which we do not believe to be the same as the lake of fire, because he will be released from that a little bit later, which we're not talking about today. But then it says that the fowls of the air are going to gather together, eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of bondmen and the flesh of freemen. It is going to be a great day of slaughter in the valley of Jezreel, the valley of Armageddon. The nations of the world will be there, and they are going to try to destroy Christ. But instead, he will destroy them. Now, that, dear friend, is going to be... Can you imagine? And we, we, you know, we think about wars. I, am a, I try to be a student of the War of Northern Aggression. I said, what was that? The Civil War. And may I just say to you again, a civil war is where one group of people try to take over the government of another group of people, and that isn't what happened. But uh, so be it. We lost... There were between 620 and 700,000 people that died in that awful conflict. But it won't be anything like compared to the final battle of Armageddon, where the blood will flow up to the horse's bridle. So, preacher, that's going to be horrific. Oh, it, it really is. But there are so many things in the book of Revelation that it talks about. Friend, I don't know if you realize this, but the book of Revelation tells us that about half of the world's population, we are somewhere between 7 and 8 billion people in the world. With this COVID virus, they... Now, whether it's true, I, I, look, I don't know whether it is. I'm not saying it is or not. But they brought refrigerated trucks in because they had, had that places to stack the bodies in New York City. Now, whether that's true or not, I, I don't know. You can read anything on the Internet. And Abraham Lincoln said that if you read it on the Internet, it's got to be true. So, you know, if you read it on the Internet, whether it's true or not, we don't, I, I don't know. But let's just say for the sake of argument that it is, that they would bring in tractor trailers to put the bodies in, how horrific that, that is and that has been. But it'll be nothing like the, the Battle of Armageddon where the blood will flow and, and there will be kings and captains and rich men and free men and bondmen all there. And the blood shall flow for 200 miles. So, do you really believe that's true? Absolutely, I do. There is a horrific day of battle coming. I think I read the other day that we've been in Afghanistan for like 19 years. It is now the longest war we've ever been involved in. 19 years. We've lost a lot of our national treasure in that place. And it's bad. But I didn't like the Battle of Armageddon. We think of the invasion of uh, France on D-Day, Normandy, where I think on it was Omaha Beach if you did not get out of that doorway coming out of that ramp immediately you had little or no chance of survival someone said that was there that when you watch Saving Private Ryan that that was a pretty good description of what it was like it was horrific it was horrible but it won't be anything like the Battle of Armageddon Say, preacher, I shouldn't want to be there at that place. No, no, you don't want to be there. Absolutely not. You say, well, is there escape? Is there a way of escape? Hebrews, the writer of Hebrews says, how shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? How are we going to escape if we neglect? God has made a way of escape. Jesus said in John chapter 14 and verse 6, I am the way. He did not say I am a way. In English, there are two indefinite articles, A and the. A is, is indefinite, and the is definite. The horse, not a horse, but the horse. A house, 
hey, go over to a house. What house? Well, the house. Jesus didn't say, I am a way. I am not a God among many gods. I am the way. The definite article. There is no other way. Someone in a song wrote, I must needs go home by the way of the cross. There's no other way but this. I shall ne'er gain sight of the gates of light if the way of the cross I miss. The way of the cross leads home. The way of the cross leads home. It is sweet to know as I onward go. The way of the cross leads home. Jesus said, I am the way. There is no other way. Paul wrote in Ephesians, when you are without hope, without Christ, you are without hope. You have no hope. But the Bible calls Jesus our hope. He is our hope. His return is called the blessed hope. But we, therefore being saved, excuse me, therefore being justified by faith. Well, you got to have faith in something. You say, faith in what? Well, many people have their faith in their church. I cannot tell you how many people I've talked to. If I ask them, say, do you know for sure you're going to heaven? I go to church. Well, that's great. I'm glad you do. But your church isn't going to get you to heaven. You say, if I go to Calvary Bible Church, will I go to heaven? No. No. No, not really. I would love to tell you if you come through the doors, and I can never determine whether it's the front of the church or the back of the church, but if you come through those doors, I can't guarantee you go to heaven because the church is not the way to heaven, but Jesus is. How shall we escape trumpets and the thunders and the vials and the seals and the great judgments upon the earth the Lord Jesus the Bible says he has delivered us from the wrath to come there is coming a day dear friend of horrific indescribable men will gnaw their tongues did you ever bite your tongue I remember playing football one time and Guy tried to tackle the other guy around the ankles, and the other guy's foot came up, and I can't tell you why, but the other kid had his tongue between his teeth when he went to tackle him. The guy's foot came up, hit his heel, drove his teeth into his eye. Blood was everywhere. He said, oh, preacher, that had to hurt. But here's what the Bible says. Men will gnaw their tongues. It is difficult. Boy, when you're eating food and you bite your tongue, boy, that hurts. But the pain will be so great that men will gnaw their tongue to relieve the pain, that the pain will be so great. Well, preacher, I don't want to get involved in that. Friend, may I encourage you today that Jesus has delivered us from the wrath to come, that we place our faith in him. For by grace are you saved through faith, by trust and grace. You're just trying to scare me. No, I'm trying to tell you the truth, that Jesus is the way the truth and the life that no man comes unto the Father but by me. Why not trust him today? Why not call him? What keeps you from trusting him? Friend, I encourage you. Call upon him today. Believe on Christ today. Receive him today, no matter what you may term it. Because listen, tomorrow, tomorrow just might be too late. We would love to tell you that if you attended Calvary Bible Church, that you would be guaranteed to go to heaven. Unfortunately, as Pastor Jim Jenkins just said, we cannot offer that. Something we can offer you, though, is we can show you how you can know for sure that you're going to heaven when you die. Wouldn't you like to avoid this horrible war, this horrible time of tribulation that Preacher talked about? Reserving your home in heaven can avoid that. If you would like to know more about how you can know for sure that you're going to go to heaven when you die, why don't you give us a call today? Our phone number here is 315-348-6271. You can also send us an email at cbclewiscounty at gmail.com. Or even better yet, why don't you come join us today? There's an empty place in a pew that can only be filled by you. Thank you again for joining us this half hour. Lord willing, we will catch you again next week. 
on Heaven Bound.